My parents were in West Africa and I used to spend a lot of time with my great aunt and my grandmother. While I was reading and looking at books and things, I suddenly discovered Greco-Roman sculpture. And I thought it was the most extraordinary thing that people could make these you know, absolutely beautiful images. And I thought, I really want to find out how you do that. And then at the age of 11, uh, I bought my first book. And that was a book on sculpture that was being done by people that were still alive. The penny dropped, really, that, that you could um, still do this wonderful thing called sculpture. And so I decided then and there that that's what I would actually um, try and do. The two types of work that I do, gallery sculpture and public sculpture, are quite different um, in that with public sculpture you've always got a client who actually has some notion of what he wants. The audience for a public sculpture is very different to the audience for a gallery sculpture. With a public sculpture the audience, strangely, is the public and so um, it's important with public sculpture that it means something to the public and, and to the people that walk past it and look at it every day. A lot of my sculpture is um, based on um, opera, music, the theatre, um, some great building that I've seen that I think, or oh, I'd quite like to do a piece of sculpture that would sort of harmonise with that building. A good story, a legend, something like that will set off a sort of chain of events in my mind and I will try and create a sculpture that, that works for that particular idea. I was doing um, some sculpture for a ship that was being built in um, a place called Mestre. Uh, the ship was taken out of the dry dock and was floated across the Venice Lagoon uh, to the arsenal uh, in Venice. And because I was there, I was able to visit the galleries and the museums and so forth. And I fell in love with the place, the, you know, the, this extraordinary um, city that's, uh, that's been built in the sea. And um, one of the things that I was interested in was the paintings of people like Canaletto and Guardi and Longhi, who were all painting um, the scenes of the day in the sort of 17th and 18th century. Uh, and these figures were cloaked and masked and had big hats and things on. And um, it hid their identity completely. And I was intrigued by this. Why, why would people do this? Um, and it came about really because Venice was the hedonistic capital of Europe and people went there to have a good time and of course the one thing that they couldn't do was offend against the social mores of the day because people would know who they were and everything but by wearing a, a sort of cloak and a mask uh, no one knew who they were so you know people could ha carry out vendettas without being seen they could have affairs with their footman or whatever it was and have a really good time and that quite intrigued me. So when I got back from that particular trip, I started to do a series of sculptures uh, where the figure was actually hidden and where you read the figure by body language. So the sort of gestures of the figures became very important. And I used this convention of the, the Venice cloak and hat and everything um, to produce sculptures which were really about body language. And that culminated in a series of sculptures that were known as the Mask Series. And I was then offered a, an exhibition in Venice. It worked really well because Venice was a city that was full of people from all over the world. Um, one of the pleasing things about it was that 
Um, not only did people that were staying in Venice uh, buy sculptures, but also Venetians bought sculptures as well. And I remember at the end of the exhibition going down the Grand Canal, delivering small sculptures to the palazzos as we went down. That was really extraordinary. I'm standing here near a, a new piece of sculpture uh, which is called Opera Gloves. So um, with this I um, did a very rough shape in clay uh, of what I wanted, then made a mould of that and then made a plaster casting which I then worked on. Um, but, but very often I will work something up in clay, I'll work something up in, in wax or I'll work something up in plaster. And it very much depends on what the end product um, is going to be, what the end shape is going to be, and the sort of texture that I want uh, to put on that particular piece, depending on um, how I think it's going to work and how I think the sort of viewing audience will respond to it.